There is an island that is home to some of the planet's most unique and threatened species. Time has slowly changed the evolutionary course of most of the beings that inhabit this forgotten patch of land. It hides its treasures and secrets sheltered in an impossible geography and impenetrable forests. In the middle of the Atlantic, in this forgotten island, we can find an untouched garden designed by the forces of evolution. This is the island of Principe. In the beginning, there is nothing. A rock risen from the depths of the ocean, bare, naked, tough rock, unprotected from the burning heat of the sun. Plants are incapable of growing here. There is no soil for them to lay their roots, no beaches for them to land, and no fresh water is retained. But a desert for some can be an oasis for others. Seabirds got here thousands of years ago, the great travelers and dispersers of nature, and have established a home in this oceanic rock in the Gulf of Guinea, the Tinhosesh Islands. These islets are the biggest and the most important nesting site in all Western Africa for seabirds that come here by the thousands. All life here rotates around these birds and their eggs. Some of these birds are oceanic birds, coming to the rock only to breed and nest. And the most common species here coexist peacefully perpetuating an ancient relationship. The birds come here by instinct, as they were born here. It is also here they will breed, generation after generation. It's their genetic heritage guiding them here whenever it is time to generate their young. There are four main species that breed here and by far the most common species are the sooty terns and the common noddies. The sterns and the common noddies lay their eggs right on the bare rock, completely unafraid, because there are no large predators to threaten them, and there being very few materials to do so. The main risk that exists here is by accident, an egg rolling and breaking. And maybe that's why another very common species here found a clever way to avoid that. Using old feathers left behind, droppings, and even bones from other birds, the black noddies build a small nest to ensure their investment. One egg is laid each season, and nests are reused in subsequent years. During the day, the heat can be harsh, and that's why most of the juveniles spend the day hidden in holes, waiting for their parents to come to feed them. 
And although they all look the same, their parents have no problem to find them on this seeming chaos. And there are others that are even easier to find, as they are a lot bigger than the other species. Brown boobies also have here an important nesting area for their species. Juveniles have brownish coloration completely different from the adult plumage. For now, they just have to wait for their parents to come and maybe exercise for the upcoming first flights. But not only birds live here. There are a lot of secrets trapped in this place, as these small islets were once connected with the main island. They have been trapped here for about 10,000 years, since the last ice age, when the Tinozush were last connected to the forest. And if this gecko is really similar to the ones found on the main island, there are inhabitants here that are now way more different. This skink is a lot bigger and darker than the ones found on the main island. As it remains to be described by science, it might well be a new species, a living secret of this desert. A bigger secret to these birds is the large green island further north, much darker, quieter and still than the Tinozush, where very few of them dare to go. The silence of the forest is deafening. Its stillness is imposed on all that lives here. Every sound measured, every ray of light consumed by the treetops, none of it finding its way to the ground. The primeval forest has been growing, ever changing, for the last 31 million years since the island rose from the ocean. The roots are deep and solid and shelter countless species of animals and fungi that have been gradually arriving through the sea for an enormous length of time. The species that arrive to this new and unknown territory are designed to adapt, evolving in an age-long race where only the fittest survive and are today completely different from their ancestors. This island has more endemic bird species per square meter than any other place in the world and it dwarfs the Galapagos in comparison. This would be Darwin's greatest delight. The creepers and the fungi arrived through the ocean, facing immense odds. Amphibians do not tolerate salt water, so how could the ancestors of what is now known as the largest tree frog in all of Africa have crossed the 220 kilometers of ocean waters separating it from the African continent? At nightfall, sheltered by the darkness, they hang on the gigantic trees that lay beside the streams and puddles formed by the rains, waiting for the insects that populate the forest. Its perfectly designed hands allow him to be a great climber, and they can go as high as five to 10 meters. This amazing species has the singularity 
of having a high polymorphism between individuals. It is possible to find a range of colors and patterns that go from green olive to brown, yellow spots, or even pink. The species is now different. It has gone down a path of no return in adapting to the forest and now leads a different life from its continental relatives. And this is true for the other frogs of the island. There are three different species of frogs on the island, all endemic, all different. How they got here remains thus an unsolved mystery, even for scientists, one of the many secrets that prevails. The land birds of the forest live in the realm of color, sound, and motion. The rhythm of the bird songs is now one of courtship, and the thousand-year-old dances are repeated every generation, guaranteeing the continuity of the species, uselessly fighting the inevitable change that has rendered them unique. A song battle has begun between two blue-breasted kingfishers, one of the most widespread birds in the island. And they will sing as loud as they can while moving their wings to impress the females and to show strength. The males engage in a dance to determine who is worthy of contributing to the next generation of chicks. And only the fitter males will get the chance to mate with the most capable females. Thus is the way of evolution by sexual selection. And few animals have evolved a strategy as refined as the Principe golden weavers. In this forest, one can admire one of the most impressive feats of natural engineering, whose intricate mechanisms are enclosed deeply within the species' genetic code, revealing itself when the time comes to build their nests. Transforming the fragile into the highly resistant, the weaver relies on its building abilities to attract a female. Instead of having evolved a complex and elaborate song or impressive tail feathers, it is the nest that will differentiate the fit from the weak. After a strikingly short length of time, it sets on proving the resistance of the nest, bouncing the nest with help of his body weight and jumping around between the nest and nearest branch. This peculiar dance serves to show that the newly elaborated home won't fall easily and is thus a safe place to lay eggs and rear a clutch of chicks. After a while, a curious female shows up and she decides to get a closer look. The male will continue his dance, increasing his efforts to impress her. The female inspects the nest thoroughly and gives him the chance to convince her. After a while, it seems that it is his lucky day. She seems enchanted. One thing that is as improbable as the island's biodiversity is its geography. With such a small surface area, its peaks rise abruptly to the skies, forming flat highlands and steep cliffs, all covered by the rainforest. As if a great 
green cloak was laid down gently over the mountains. There isn't a single square meter that hasn't been rooted by plants. Life flourishes everywhere. In the highlands, as is the case in the lower areas, the high treetops absorb every bit of light that comes from the sun. And with it, the forest takes all the energy it needs to exist. The trees grow tired and old, and the leaves and trunks that die, fall and rot have created a deep and rich soil which serves as nourishment for endless forms of life. Insects, fungi, snails, and all sorts of creepers are in turn at the core of the intricate web of the war between predator and prey. For each of the species that feeds on rotting matter, there is a specialized predator of which the most perfectly designed ones are the reptiles. These primitive hunters come in many forms, and in this forest, there is one whose origin remains a mystery to the present day. The Principe elegant worm snake digs its way through rotting logs and through the dirt, searching for smaller creatures to feed on. Again, how it is possible that its ancestors reached the island is still unknown, but the fact remains that it has evolved to be a striped, colorful snake, specializing in hunting in the dark, very different from its relatives of the continent. The forest is home to an impressive number of endemic birds. Many of them are now completely different from the ones found on mainland Africa. The birds that arrived here found a pristine habitat full of opportunities to thrive, and with adaptation, some started to become different. This one is so different from any of the mainland species that tax ominous did not know to which family it belonged. The mystery was recently solved by reading its genetic material. The dawn's thrush babbler descends from migrant warblers from Europe that decided never to go back. To understand how these transformations happened, there is a small islet where this phenomenon is easier to understand. The Jockey Cap Isle, which is named after its peculiar shape, is just three kilometers away from the main island. This tiny islet is almost all covered by oil palms that can provide food for many birds. And so, when a long time ago a bird that living in this patch of land here to separated from the main island, the Principe seed eater was to become the jockey's cap seed eater. The seed eaters that were stuck here had only the palm fruits to eat, and so they became increasingly specialized in eating them. The trees started to respond, creating a co-evolutionary process that was to generate larger fruits and larger beaks, hanging both species in the process. Generation after generation, and with limited flux, between the population of Principe and the one in the islet, the initial bird became a different species. If it is highly unlikely that amphibians and reptiles got here, it would also be hard 
for a non-flying mammal to do so. In the forest, there is another animal whose origins are a hidden secret, the only non-flying mammal endemic to the island, the shrew. It's another recent discovery for scientists, mainly because of its elusive behavior. It ferociously digs the ground looking for prey. Its high metabolism requires that it feeds dozens of times per day, which again presents a puzzle for evolutionary biologists trying to understand this improbable scenario of diverse life forms. Most think that they must have arrived inside a rotting log that was carried on a natural raft by the Gulf of Guinea currents all the way from the Congo River mouth, making it one of the only two shrews inhabiting oceanic islands on the planet. The other one is just 150 kilometers away in the sister island of Sao Tome. In this apparent stillness, life and death are on the line every single moment, and the shrew had to adapt to the many dangers. This is the Principe green snake, a highly effective predator that preys on many of the forest creatures. The way it blends with its natural surroundings is remarkable, and it is certainly an asset both to ambush prey and to avoid predators. It's not venomous, so her success on hunting depends on a surprise attack, which should be easy considering how good her camouflage is. The Principe green snake is one of the many invisible beings that inhabit this magical forest. Insular gigantism is a biological phenomenon in which the size of small animals isolated on an island increases dramatically in comparison to their mainland relatives. More than half of the species of land snails of Principe are endemic. This one is the biggest, reaching on its adult form the impressive size of a tennis ball. Once again, the ancestors of this obo snail must have landed on an abandoned beach and started a life on the island, eventually generating a whole new species, adapting to the new territory, with its abundance indeed, but also with its dangers. One of the mightiest and most feared predators of the forest is the blue-breasted kingfisher, or the Shosho, as it is known here. Even humans consider it to be a magical creature, a sort of a wizard trapped in animal form. They have a varied diet, which goes from small fish to insects, small mammals, and perhaps their preferred one, snails. But as snails have strong defenses, they had to find a way to deal with this fact. Few animals escape the Shushu stone. Each has one or more anvils where they bring their prey to die. It is a rudimentary form of tool use, but it is quite impressive for a bird and it does require some skill. This is a young one. He is having some trouble. It seems that he lost it. Maybe he still has to perfect his technique.
Around 500 years ago, there was an event that was to change the face of the forest forever, at least part of it. Man discovered the island and soon after started its occupation. With it, dozens of plant species were introduced and some new animals were brought in by ship. Suddenly, the whole balance of the ecosystem was compromised. No one knows how many native species became extinct or faced new broad predators which they were not prepared to face. One apex predator of this island at that time was the yellow-billed kite, the only bird of prey recorded for the island of Principe, and a constant sight flying high in the skies above the forest. Today, it shares the high canopy of the forest with a very numerous group of individuals. The bullies of the forest. The commotion and agitation rises, contrasting with the age-old silence imposed by the dense vegetation of the forest. During the last centuries, they have made a home for themselves here, and they know many of the forest secrets as well as the fruits and seeds that arrived with them on the same ships. They are a highly social animal, forming large groups, and youngsters can be spotted all year round with their mothers. The days are spent in the large trees that offer shelter and nourishment, and they cross the forests in the same invisible roads that their ancestors used when they arrived here centuries ago. The Mona monkeys were brought from the African continent by the settlers as a food source for traveling ships and formed a wild population. No one knows how to measure the natural unbalance that came with them, but as they are omnivorous, and feed on almost everything, one can imagine the damage to certain animal populations that were not used to having a specialized predator. The Mona monkey has no natural predators in this forest, and only the hunting by the people of the island, who hunt them for their meat, controls their numbers. They are widespread on the entire island, from the mountains to the low forests, and even to the coast. And although human hunting is a constant menace, the forest of this island still provides them with everything that they need to thrive. Today, the human transformation is mostly seen on the north part of the island. Its primeval state is drastically modified, sometimes beyond recognition. Sugar and cocoa plantations were the most common agricultural exploration, and huge areas of lowland forests were cut down to give way to these new plants. 
but other commercial crops were planted, such as oil palms, jackfruits, and breadfruits. With the help of the natural seed dispersers, many of these plants ended up being dispersed around the island. With the abandonment of these plantations after the country's independence from Portugal in 1975, nature took back what belonged to her. The new plants were weaved within the forest, forming a secondary forest, composed by a mosaic of plant species that indeed benefits from some important species of the island. Many of the animals exposed to these new plants and sources of nourishment were capable of rapidly embracing change and today are thriving in numbers because of these recent introductions and some more than others. The Principe Grey Parrot is an opportunistic and very intelligent bird. and more than any other, he knows how to take advantage of the new plants. They love fruits, and here he just found a tree with plenty of them. After choosing one, it is time for a quick meal. uses his strong beak to break through the nutshell and eat the succulent interior. But he doesn't go unnoticed. There are others here that are very interested on what the parrot is doing. Suddenly, he is surrounded by Principe Golden Weavers, which have just to wait for the right moment to have an easy meal. As the weavers have not such a strong beak, it's harder for them to reach the interior of the nut, and so they go for the leftovers of the parrot. A good way not to waste food. The grey parrot is a common inhabitant of the forest, and partly because of the great variety of introduced plants in the north of the island. The parrots form large social groups and interact in a complex manner, recognizing dozens of different individuals and communicating with many different sounds. At dawn, they can be seen flying in large flocks and their sounds fill the air with the end of one more day. Soon, the night will have fallen and the creatures of dusk will either hide or endure hours of deep blindness. Almost no light can ever penetrate, not even with the brightest moon. The creepers that have managed to elude the dangers of the day have again guaranteed the continuity of one of the most improbable and unique forests on our planet. The African civet, a nocturnal mammal brought by settlers to eliminate rodents also brought by man, is the queen of the night and constant danger to most of the beings that inhabit this forest. It's a very opportunistic animal and it feeds on a huge variety of items, plants and fruits, invertebrates, eggs, small mammals, birds and whatever it can find. 
Like the monkeys, it was brought from the African continent. And, as it happens with most of animal introductions, it didn't solve the problem of the introduced rodents population. Once again, no one knows the unbalance their arrival caused in the natural order of things. The coral trees were brought centuries ago from South America to shade the cocoa plantations. Their vivid orange canopy signals the end of the dry season here, the gravana, and the return of the rains. The forest needs lots of humidity, something that is certainly not missing here, one of the wettest regions of the earth. The next few months will be filled with water everywhere, and the forest will assume another form. Rivers will appear where they were not before, as high waterfalls and the main courses of water will carry a new breath of life to the many habitants of the rivers. These rivers are created by the constant flow of wet clouds coming from the southwest, that being forced to rise suddenly up to 900 meters in height rapidly condense, unloading the rains that fall heavily down at the tallest peaks. Water is synonymous of life and here, of course, this is no exception. The forest is crossed by countless courses of water, and there are three main rivers on the island. The Papagayo River, the Banzu River, and the Sao Tome River. All kind of wildlife is attracted to these rivers, and many species are completely dependent on this precious and fragile habitat. These primitive looking creatures are locked between two worlds. It has perfect scales. It has fins. It seems to be a fish, but a very special one, as it spends a lot of time outside the water. And that's why their fins already resemble legs and very helpful for moving on land. They have the unique ability of breathing through their skin, although they need to be constantly wet. Being outside the water can be good for finding food, but here it is easy to change from predator to prey. And if they sense danger, they will quickly return to the water. The Principe's Malachite Kingfisher is watching the waters attentively. This small but tough bird is completely fearless. Its highly conspicuous appearance somehow remains unnoticed by the small fish that live in the shallow waters of the river mouths, and it dives with impressive velocity to capture its unsuspecting prey. Most of the times, many attempts have to be made before he gets his preferred meal, small fish. This highly specialized hunter is widespread throughout the island, indifferent to men and the invasive species it brought along, taking its part as a top predator on the coast and the riverside. After heavy rains, the sky usually turns blue. The coast, the edge of the forest, and frontier that separates it from the Atlantic waters of the Gulf of Guinea is a perfect site 
to enjoy the sun. The beaches, forged by the ocean through the ages, are a remarkable feat of persistence and are a beautiful reminder of nature's grace and subtlety. Populated by the ever-present coconut trees and several species of crabs and many species of birds that prey on them, the beaches are a birthplace for life as well. In the many beaches that are found all around the island every year, a very special event takes place. Hundreds of marine turtles hatch every year on these amazing beaches, finding here a perfect site to start their new lives. There are four different species that have chosen this island as a home, and although they are born in impressive numbers, only one in 1,000 will reach their adult life. In the south of the island lies one of the best preserved beaches and patch of wild forest of the island. The Sao Tome beach is where its homonymous river meets the sea and it is here one finds many endemic plants of the island. Following the river upstream, even for just a few dozen meters, means wandering into the impenetrable and primeval forests of the south. This rainforest, the one that covers the mountainsides, is completely untouched in a perfect primeval state, unbothered by recent events. Everything happens slowly, over the ages, and even the creatures here seem to know it. The dusk is about to set in, and this is the time when most of the forest creatures are active. The sound of the night starts to be heard, and within the deep parts of the forest, where men have yet to lay foot and establish its domain, there is an animal that hasn't even seen the ape that came from the sea. It was thought to be extinct for almost a hundred years by the scientific community until he was rediscovered just a few years ago. As it happens in many habitats where certain species evolved with the absence of predators, this bird approaches those who intrude perhaps eager to learn about what is new, unaware of the danger it might fall into. At the edge of the forest, where it once lived peacefully, it was easily killed by men, as it remained unafraid in its presence. It combs the ground repeatedly, searching for worms and insects, and investigates the slightest commotion in the forest. It knows every corner of its territory, every leaf, every burrow. Now, fewer than 300 live in the forest. The Principes thrush is the most fragile of the known species of the island, its most vulnerable and precious inhabitant. For now, the end of one more day has just arrived. A realm of beauty, discovery and resilience. The infinity of green. creatures that defy the theories of evolution. This 
is where evolution explored new boundaries, tested new strategies, and generated beauty and diversity. Magnificent peaks and a breathtaking landscape. An ocean of colors, shapes, sounds, and mystery. An ancient and magic forest. Formidable and unique creatures. Outstanding and pristine beaches. The immensity of the Atlantic Ocean and all its wonderful marine life. The improbable island is one of our planet's best kept secrets. The lost Eden of the Atlantic, the Principe Island. Ma foga sono tatie, itano. 